Hello everybody, this is Douglas Allen Frazier. It is Friday, the 31st of March, 2023, and we are enjoying a day where we can cast to the right side. I hope you've had a blessed day today. I hope you've been able to get things done that you needed to get done. Um, and were able to accomplish those things that maybe uh, you put off for a while. I know in our house today, uh, my wife and I both worked in our yard and uh, I changed the filter and the oil on our uh, our little lawn tractor. And uh, so we, we had a great day. We both got a little dirty. Uh, I, I hope I am cleaned up now. And um, we enjoyed the time. And then my wife, I just had a wonderful meal, which she had fixed. And uh, here I am down, down at my favorite place to come. I'm blessed. Again, I'm going to say by my neighbors that I have the ability to come here to enjoy the beauty of this place, to enjoy the, the animals that are around here that I see. Uh, the ducks, the geese, uh, the deer, um, mountain lion. Well, we're not sure if it's a mountain lion or a bobcat, but anyway, a big, big cat we saw a while ago. And turkey and other small birds, etc. It's a blessing to be here, to enjoy this. And I'm glad I can share it with you. It's a little breezy today. So I hope the sound quality comes across well. Now, to finish out the month, I am going to go back and look at the essential teachings of Mother Teresa for the last day of this month. And this is what she says. Today, more than ever, I'm going to say that again because this is going to be highlighted Today, more than ever, we need to pray for the light to know the will of God. For the love to accept the will of God and for the way to do the will of God. Let me highlight that again for you, because I think this is a very important aspect of where we are personally and as a nation today. So let me highlight this again with maybe some added comments. Today, more than ever, and I agree with that, today more than ever, we need to pray for the light to know the will of God. We need to know the will of God in our life and in the light of this nation and where we are going. I'm not going to go into all the political ramifications that have just come up with the indictment of President Trump. I'll just put it up, basically, not on trumped-up charges, but just on a basis of law that holds no, no weight other than the fact that they want to come against former President Trump. I'll just put it that way. There's a lot more I could say, but I'm not going to get into it. But there is a double standard of how law is applied in this nation and it's getting worse and worse and worse and that's why more than ever we need to pray for the light to know the will of god to let the light of god shine in on the darkness that we're seeing across this nation and let's go back. Boy, I, I didn't think I was going to do this, but I am. Let's, let's maybe drop off President Trump. 
How about what happened in Nashville? Where a transgender person comes in with a full intent of murdering adults and children. As a result, three adults and three children were lost in that horrific attack. Apparently, this person had even planned other attacks at other schools. We need the light of God to shine in and expose the darkness that is taking over the minds of our young people. I'll say it again. There is a dark force, a dark force, and the only dark force that I know that exists is the dark forces of evil that are established by Satan himself to take people away from the truths of God. Let's take it into the gen transgender area. The truth of God is God made man and woman. That's it. You are either a male or a female. And we don't need people that are trying to sway our young children at ages that are well beyond and well below any form of understanding of true sexuality and say, well, you know, you're not really a little boy. You're, you want to be a girl. Or you're not really a little girl. You want to be a boy and we'll help you. And we'll hide it from your parents. We'll take you to doctors that'll mutilate you. Come on, folks. Today, more than ever, we need to pray for the light to know the will of God. And the will of God is to do away with this type of attitude, this type of teaching in our nation. And for the love to accept the will of God. The will of God is that we know him. And that we know what he has provided for us. By making a choice available to us. Where Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way. And I am the only way that you can come to the Father. Read that in John 14, 6. For the way to do the will of God, as we move into the Passover season next week and into the Resurrection Sunday, the will of God was done by Jesus Christ. He came to fulfill the will of his heavenly father to give us the opportunity the opportunity to choose either life with him or life without him both are eternal you might go back to my message on the 27th of March, where I talked about that. We are eternal beings. And our eternity will either be with God or it will be without God. And we will be cast into the darkness that was established originally for those angels 
who rebelled against God at the leadership of the former worship leader in heaven, Lucifer, who we now call Satan. He's a great salesman. And he's selling the same thing today. He tried to sell it to Jesus. Adam and Eve, they bought into it. As a result, they did not die physically until later on in their lives. They were five, six hundred years old by that time. But they were separated from God who they have been with in the Garden of Eden, which God placed them in and made for them. But when they disobeyed, Satan, as that little varmint snake, jumped up and down and saying, I got gotcha. you. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Because you see, God gives us today his love and his love includes our ability to choose the ability to choose now one of the psalms that talks about choices and what god wants to do in our life most everybody has heard of it's psalm 23. now I just want to dwell on a portion of it. Let me see here. Let me see. Let me read the whole thing. 23rd Psalm starts out, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to hit that last portion where it says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now let me highlight it this way. We're not sheep. And we get to choose who our shepherd is. Who's going to guide and direct us? Who's got the rod and the staff to move us in the right direction? Let me make that clear. And God wants to provide for us. And he wants us to dwell in the house of the Lord forever with him. So our relationship is a matter of choice. Our relationship with God, though, is enduring and it is eternal. It's easy to read this last phrase and assume that David is merely saying, well, when I die, I'll go to heaven. Well, that's true if you've chosen Jesus to be your shepherd. But it's really important when he says this, when David says this, dwelling in the house of the Lord does not begin when we die it really starts when we enter into our relationship with God. I quoted already John 14, 6, 
For Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. So if we're going into the house to dwell forever, we've got to come by the rules of the housekeeper, the rules of the one who is inviting us to come, who's giving us a choice. Now, in Psalm 90, in verse 1, it declares this, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. And then it says this in Psalm 91, verse 9, you have made the Lord your dwelling place. So our dwelling place is with the Lord basically when we choose Jesus Christ to become our shepherd. We're ready to go to the place and it doesn't matter at what age. As I shared with you, I had a friend of ours that we went to their funeral and she was 86. I went up to Indiana and prayed over a young lady, the, the, the daughter-in-law of one of my friends from Japan. She was 37. And I just had a classmate that passed away on Tuesday of this week. And he's about my age. I believe he's either 75 or 76. But you see, when you know Jesus, you're already abiding in that house and he wants us to stay in that relationship if you're in your house think about it this way if you are married and you and your wife have a home that you share together whether you are away like i used to go tdy when i was in the air force quite often sometime for months at a time but you see, my dwelling place was not where I was on temporary duty. My dwelling place was back home with my wife and children. So likewise, our eternal life is not something we would receive when we die. It's something that we receive the moment that we put our faith in Jesus. Eternal life is life today when you have Jesus. For it says in John 3, 36, and I'm going to close with this. He who believes in the Son, that's Jesus, has everlasting life. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to go a little bit farther. Let's turn over also to John 5 24 and it says this okay John 5 24 he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment but has passed from death into life and life eternal I'm going to be a little bit bold with this statement, and I hope you can handle it. Because I think you need to hear it this way. I'll be very honest with you when I say this. You who have heard my words that I am sharing today and believes in them because I am sharing them because Jesus is mine and I want him to be your choice too. He has already given me everlasting life and I want that everlasting life for you when you choose him. And you shall not come into judgment when you choose him as your Lord and Savior, when you repent from your sins, 
but you have now passed from death into life. That is my prayer for you this day, because I know this, that is the will of God for you and your life. God bless you all, and we will see you on Monday. That'll be, let's see, the 3rd, hmm, wow, the 3rd of April for more of Cast to the Right Side.